I am Dr. Teresa Bowling. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate an infraclavicular block or catheter. The first thing we do to optimize positioning is to move the patient's stretcher away from the wall and tilt it in a diagonal direction in order to optimize the positioning so that I can actually access the infraclavicular space with my ultrasound probe. I've abducted this model's arm to optimize positioning so that I can get the needle in between the ultrasound probe and her clavicle. Here's the ultrasound image that is very typical. She's very shallow, we're only at four centimeters on our ultrasound depth. And here's the pec major, the pec minor, the axillary artery pulsating, and the axillary vein. To confirm artery, we can put on our color flow Doppler, and you can see a nice image there confirming that is in fact the axillary artery. To the left of the screen is the cephalad position, to the right of the screen is the caudal position. And as I rotate the ultrasound probe ever so slightly, you can see the lateral, posterior, and medial cord somewhere in there, popping up very hyper echogenic. As you compress the muscles, you can see the vein does compress, but the artery does not compress. And this actually increases the visualization of our lateral cord and our posterior cord. Our goal is to place the needle in this direction and get just distal to the lateral cord and beneath the posterior cord. Deep to the posterior cord, we typically inject 15 mLs of half percent ropivacaine. After we inject that local anesthetic, we back our needle up to place the remaining local anesthetic, 15 mLs of half percent ropivacaine, next to the lateral cord. In our practice, we generally do not inject to the medial cord, which is located between the axillary artery and the axillary vein and is typically difficult to isolate. For this procedure, we use a 90 millimeter, 21 gauge needle, and again, we inject 30 mLs of half percent ropivacaine for our block. If we're going to place a catheter, we place the catheter after the injection of local anesthetic through the needle, and we typically thread the catheter deep to the posterior cord, right along this area here. One point I would like to make is a lot of people are fearful of this block because of the risk of pneumothorax. So what I'd like to demonstrate on our ultrasound image here, again, this is the lateral cord and the posterior cord, the axillary artery and the axillary vein, is you can't even see lung in this picture. I'm very lateral, as lateral as I can get. I'm scanning a little more laterally there, and as you scan medially, you're going to see the pleura come into view, and you'll see the lung beneath it. And here is, in fact, the pleura and the lung beneath the axillary artery and the axillary vein. But there's no need to inject there. As long as you place your probe more laterally, the lung and the pleura fall out of view, and the risk of pneumothorax is certainly minimized. After injection of local anesthetic, we do like to confirm a ring of local anesthetic around the axillary artery, and that will ensure that we've blocked all three cords, lateral, posterior, and medial. This ultrasound video demonstrates an infraclavicular block. From the left-hand side of the screen, you can see the insertion of a 4-inch, 17-gauge TUI needle that's going to come in and out of plane. And that's very characteristic of this block for the needle to come in and out of plane because the angle is so steep. Our goal is to achieve initially beneath the posterior cord. We generally give about 15 mLs of half percent ropivacaine in this location. Very often, hydrodissection can help you with this block in finding the tip of your needle because very often it's a deep block and again the angle is very steep and you can see here the pooling of local anesthetic deep to the axillary artery. The goal is to have the local anesthetic deposited posteriorly and it will circle around the axillary artery to cover the medial cord. Very often you can do a single injection here as you see in this nerve block and see circumventional spread of the local anesthetic to cover all three cords. The posterior cord, the lateral cord, and the medial cord. However, in some instances, we will only inject half the local anesthetic here, and the other half of the local anesthetic will deposit in the lateral cord. As the local anesthetic spreads, very often the axillary artery will drift upward towards the pec minor. You can see the two muscle layers there, the pec major and the pec minor. And in this instance, in this patient, those layers are very thin. However, in a very muscular patient, very often these layers can be extremely thick and your target can very often be even six centimeters below the skin surface, which can make this block somewhat challenging at times.